Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Talking Elite Fitness. I'm Sean Woodland, joined by Lauren Khalil. Lauren, how you doing? I'm great. Fantastic. Not as caffeinated as I would have liked you to be You sound today. like you need food. Uh, no, well, I need a sweet treat now. All right, sweet treat. I think one's on its way. And featuring Tommy Marquez. Tommy, how are you? Uh, I am also in the market for a sweet treat, okay. um, <laughs> which should be remedied soon, but we just had some leftover pizza, which was fantastic. Oh, yeah. No, that, was, that stuff is, uh, I might tear into that here in, in a little bit. But we are now done with the second of three days of Tier Wadapalooza SoCal. Uh, just wrapped up competition at the Tier Cup, which is... Um, going not as expected right now uh, mm-hmm. but that's a that's a good thing because we're all tied up heading into the third and final day of the competition four more events remain before we get into our recap and our preview of the third and final day we want to thank our sponsor for our coverage here in Huntington Beach and that is box basics you guys can head to shop boxbasics.com and get whatever you need to get yourself properly outfitted for the gym Use our code TEF and you will save 20%. And Justin and Steven, the two guys who run Box Basics, are fantastic human beings that will provide you with the best customer service that you have ever had and will make sure that you are 100% satisfied, not only with your order, but also with your overall experience with their company. Shopboxbasics.com. Use the code TEF and you can save 20% on a lot of great stuff that they have there. You name you name a big brand in shoes. They got apparel. They got uh, gear for your box. You're good to go. Also, through Box Basics, we're doing a giveaway that started. We announced today. So three lucky winners will get a pair of the Tier CX2 trainers. Ooh, we announced it on our Instagram. Wearing today. them right now. Yes, you They're are wearing great. them right now. And so, if you want to potentially win a pair, or you just want to upgrade your shoe closet, because who doesn't need that? <laughs> check out. The post on our Instagram, the cover photo is a is a is of the, for what it's worth, silver, uh, CX two trainers, and we explain how to win it there, and then just go to Shopbox Basics and use TEF. Happy All right, days. Happy love days. those guys. Check them out, please. Shopboxbasics.com. and as Tommy said, the code is TEF to save twenty percent. Okay, let's uh, get into it here. We came into the day with. Team North America leading by one point after the events. Am I correct in saying that? No, it was tied. It was tied. It was two to two. You know, the more things change, the that's more right. It was two to two insane. after because they had two event. That's right. They had two points for event two. Mm-hmm. That's been the only multiple point event. So we were tied at two. Started the day with the event out of the beach that was not streamed. North America wins that. That was the row burpee run cumulative time of the six athletes uh, wins. And North America took that. So now they're up three to two. So then we go into the nighttime events. And this is where the majority of the surprises of the day took place. First event was the cumulative reps spotlight event. It Mm -hmm. was for North America, Alexis Raptus and Pat Vellner. For the world team, it was Guy Mayeros and Tia Toomey. So Tia was able to build, I think it was a seven rep lead over those, was it? One, two. I thought it was like five uh, or three, six. Yeah, five it was intervals. five. I think I, I think wrote it, was it down. Six one or moment. seven. It was no, a, it wasn't that big. Uh, I think it was um, on the broadcast. I think it was. I think it was six or seven. It was. It was I'm pretty sure. Fifty-nine to sixty-six. Okay, the, before the men. Fifty-nine to sixty-six. So that's seven. 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 <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was like, "Let the loading bar." <laughs> yeah, and then there it is. Seven <laughs> reps. Uh, Pat, for the most part, it was five until the end. And Pat Vellner cut two off of that on the first round of rope climbs and I think that's as close as he got. He was unable to catch Guy on the freestanding handstand push-ups and it was really the muscle-ups where Pat needed to make a move uh, and couldn't do it. I think he got maybe within maybe got within four at one point but Guy held him off. World yeah. team gets the win and now we're, t- we're tied again. Yeah. Dun, dun, now we're tied at, what was it tied at three? Yep, it yep. tied at three because you know North America won the running event in the be- on the beach. They're th- the first three athletes across the finish line because it was like an it was an aggregate of your individual performances. Were all North America men like they came out and like stomped the gas pretty yeah. quick. Then- Tia, Tia comes out, sets them up, mm-hmm. and I think like if anyone wants to know like what the difference is between and this is not 
take nothing away from Alexis Raptors. She is a phenomenal athlete. No, and she Pretty did a good job kind of hanging on there. And she doing did. She did. Like but, I said, she's one of the best on her hands. How yeah. fast she was getting down and up. Yeah. Like, and that's very where impressive. she actually... She started to pull ahead a little she bit. She did. She did. Pull, she had the lead, I think, going into the... She the did muscle-ups. before the ring muscle-ups. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Tia took the lead on the ring muscle-ups and held on to it. On, and it was actually better, I think, relatively speaking, on the handstand push-ups on the way back. Mm-hmm. And that was like, okay, mm-hmm. this is where, like, you can't just take a little snapshot of this event, like, with one movement. You're able to see how Tia is able to tie all of the components together for a cohesive event performance. And I'm like, that is what makes you the GOAT, right? Mm-hmm. That's why you're so good. Oh, and up to this point, she had done every single event of the competition so far. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, how can you not? When you have Tia, you throw yeah. her out there. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, I mean, even the athletes are joking. It's like, you can't just have her win everything. And they're like, <laughs> well, we kind of can. Yes, you can. Why can't we? Yeah. And and then even Guy, like, it, it's been fun. We talk about, you know, the... the the trash talking, the showmanship a little bit. Yeah, which it was good. Room. Got a little heated. I won't say heated, but it got a little on the verge of getting heated. Yeah. Well, Guy did the the pose on the rope. Mm-hmm. That was insane. He, like where he goes horizontal. He just side. held it. Yeah. That looked like someone been taking uh, maybe some pole dancing <laughs> classes, <laughs> you know, to maybe spice up the marriage again after, you know, a couple of decades. <laughs> Or maybe, you know, he just liked gymnastics as a kid. I don't know. But that was like maybe. a, I was expecting him to like oh wrap a leg God. and then slide all the way down to the bottom, <laughs> go upside down. So now we're tied up again. And then we go into the uh, same gender pairs. Total time wins the event. Uh, women started. And for the world team, it was Emma Tall and Grace Walton. So this is the first time that Tia is now getting a break. Mm-hmm. They go out against Ariel Lowen and... Uh, Emily Rolf, and it was the 72 reps worked their way down the floor. And for the most part, the world team had the lead. Then they got to the ski erg, and Rolf and Lowen did enough to close the gap to give their men a chance. And then it was, they handed things over to the men, Bjorn, Carl Gubinson, and Fakowski for the world team, Medeiros and Pepper for the North American team, and they pretty much erased that deficit on the skier and then took over on the ping pong wall balls and then never surrendered the lead after that. And then now we're back to 4-3. And this is where you get to see what the application of pressure can do in these scenarios where you're getting a little bit outside of what the realm of normal is for these individual athletes. Mm-hmm. So speaking with Dallin afterwards, he was like, oh yeah, me and Justin the whole time knew that if it was close, we'd at least be able to pick up some time on those first two implements. And seeing that leader race, Mm -hmm. if you're the other team, is kind of like, uh-oh, maybe the hair on the back of my neck stands up a little bit, Mm -hmm. and maybe I put press or push a little bit and something bad could happen. And that's what we saw. They come out, they hammered the ski erg. (laughs) They come out, they blow through the wall balls, they get a little bit of a lead, and then you started to see both BKG and Fikowski. I don't know if, if they would say that they were pressing, but you could definitely see the cadence of them reflect the fact that, oh, we had a lead, it dissipated, now we got to make sure we don't mm-hmm. fall behind. Well, and they made the mistake and then they, the BKG, and then, yeah. Yeah, and then you slip with the wall ball, and um, that was... That was cool, and that's honestly probably the point where I was like, oh, this day feels different as a competition. It did. Yeah. I felt there was more excitement in the building too. I don't know if that because you guys were down in the media yeah. pit. It was. It was. Yeah. It felt like it moved quicker mm-hmm. today, and there was more like nail biting moments. Yeah. It, where you didn't know what was going to happen. And and I think with a day or two under the belt, it seemed like the the teams and the athletes were a little bit more in their groove. Mm-hmm. So there were more athletes that could help out at things in between. So it seemed like the complete team as a whole was more involved in every single workout instead of trying to figure out how am I going to manage this downtime or this turnaround time so maybe I'm not out there chalking chalking a piece of equipment for my teammate or maybe I'm not out there at the finish line mm-hmm. because I'm like trying to make sure I'm ready for my portion and seeing North America win a, win a point world win a point the North America come from behind and take a point that was like oh this isn't just a one-sided thing. We're, we're, and it's not just like a, a hap, like a hapless, toothless competition. It's we are throwing blows, mm-hmm. you know, metaphorically speaking. They're answering back with their own blows, 
and neither one is like going to just kind of back down once it gets a little bit above where they wanted it to be as like a fun competition. Yeah. You know? And one, once down and, and Justin won that, it, everyone was like, oh, okay, where, where's the turning point on this with the, with the clean one, with the well, bar muscle clean event? So going in, I felt like once North America regained the lead, they're up four to three, going into that last one, I thought heavily favored the North America team. I was like, okay, yeah. this is where they're going to start to pull away. There were a couple matchups like that you definitely put in the bag for the world team. Tia and Guy. Yeah. You're not beating them. Yep. Um, and then it was like, okay, who on the world team can steal one? And right out of the gates, Sayer Kaya beats Danielle Brandon. Danielle got a, she, well, she hopped off. She came down with failed rep and then had yeah. to come off. And that's what let Sayer get the, the lead that she needed. And now all of a sudden, that's a matchup that I think if you look just up on paper, yeah. you put that squarely in the North America corner. Yeah. And now world's up one nothing. You're like, well, okay, they stole one there, but I don't think that's going to continue. And it did. It was a light. That moment was a lightning rod for the world team because when she crossed the finish line, it was like, oh, that's a point for us. And we, everybody mm -hmm. lost their mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they start like, and they were pumped for. Obviously, this is uh, for most of I would say North America and a lot, a good portion of the casual CrossFit viewers. Sahar Kaya is an, a, a household name, right? Um, and even from that fact arose a little bit of chirping from, from both sides, you know, like, um, like Danielle being like, I don't know who she is. And then her being like chirping the back a little bit and then they go head to head and she wins and they're like, oh, all right, this is this, like, again, it comes back to like, this has got some teeth to it, which is great. And you could just see like her come out of her shell a little bit. Yeah. And she I'm is, so impressed with that. She's been to the games three times, Yeah, but I feel like that's an environment that maybe has overshadowed her. So to see her in this smaller format and then have her moment and bring her personality out more and be more engaging and really like find her, her own grove. I'm really enjoying watching her and uh, other athletes and y'all being one of them well, as well. And then he with comes what he out did. and it was funny because we were talking on the broadcast. Chase was mentioning how you, you got a clean ladder. You got a guy who's got pressure on him. I mean, of course you want Justin Medeiros in this situation. Look what he's done. Yeah. And look what he did in 2023. Mm -hmm. And then a couple years earlier in 2021 when he, yeah. it's like, it's all there for Justin to sort of stop the bleeding, get us back on track. And then he looks like he's going to win it. He gets to the final barbell. He fails, mm -hmm. which no one expected. Yep. And here comes Anio Lakai, hits the lift, and now it's 2 nothing world. And then you're like, okay, this is, <laughs> now we're in trouble. Because put those two wins in the bag with Guy and, and yeah. Tia, and that's all you need. And right? he yeah. came off the floor, goes over to Emily Rolf and goes, you were cheering for me, weren't you? <laughs> And, and he, I mean, he brought some, I mean, you could see it when he crossed the finish line, the passion of like yeah. that yeah. moment for him, but also it, that's the difference between really pinning your ears back and taking a chance mm -hmm. and it working out because, and when I spoke to Brent about this, athletes were riding a line on the bar muscle ups, right? Because some they're with only one set and you can really just sprint. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are pulling to the near locked elbows. Well, just, and Daniel got hit with a no rep. I think one or two for that. Because they yeah, were a, the the danger of that when you're trying to uh, cycle them very quickly is that you don't your point of extension and support isn't above the bar. Mm -hmm. It's behind it a little bit and that's what he got hit with. Yeah. But also you could tell he was pressing the turnover speed. So when Justin got ahead and came off a couple reps still you're like oh man he just needs to have a clean run again but and you'll press to actually get close to him and close the gap again as, like after falling behind and then justin maybe put his hands on the bar split maybe a split second sooner than he wanted to and annual knowing that he just failed the rep like now has the benefit of like i can take a beat dial in on this one seeing him and that's like also they talk about in running when you get um the like a boost from passing somebody mm -hmm. when you when you draft or pass someone you get like an like a physical like adrenaline bump and an energy bump from that right because just sheer like i just got gotcha you mm -hmm. and i'm moving ahead of you gives you a little bit more physiologically and you saw that from annual because as soon as that bar hit the ground from justin it was a no rep he was like 
Let's I go. It. Yeah. I got it. And and I mean, he's crazy strong to begin with. Yeah. And like, I thought he was going to break his hand on the rig because <laughs> he 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 like went nuts and he had the braids and it was it was all like this like flash a moment and everyone's like, what the hell just happened? Mm-hmm. You know, like this Tas- big personality, this Tasmanian devil from the Basque region. I, I don't even think he's from the Basque region, but he's, I think he's San Sebastian, but it just comes whirling through and now North America's on their heels. Yeah. And then it was, it was Raptus versus tall and Emma goes out and reels her. And Raptus now in. it's three, nothing. <laughs> and you're like, I mean, it was over at that point because now you're the, the key moment in that match mm-hmm was Alexis Raptus taking so long on the final barbell because the tie break now, best case scenario for North America, is the total time for all uh, six of your athletes. Mm -hmm. And that huge break right there, I mean, made it nearly impossible for North America to win any sort of tie break because Mm -hmm. of that just amount of time that passes. So Adler comes out and then, you know, Barely beat Brent Fakowski. Fakowski looked good. Yeah, we we uh, we were saying it on the sideline in the press pit, and Heber and I were kind of like, after his like first five bar muscles were, oh, I didn't know, like Ben mm-hmm. like had that or, or sorry Brent, uh, yeah. Brent had that style of bar muscle up skill, and it speaks to the evolution of the games athlete, right? I, if you remember, you go back seven, eight years ago, there were maybe one or two athletes that could do that style of like almost to lock out mm-hmm. bar muscle up and you immediately press out and come down. It was like Sam Briggs. I think Val Bo- Voberol had Froning it. could kind of do Froning it. Too. I could kind of have it at time. It was yeah. Just effortless for him. Um, but other than that, that was like a little like leg up that you had if you can do it. And now all of them were doing it. Yeah. Even the guys that are like, oh, um, he's a longer mover in terms of like ROM and. Brent did that and we were like that was a like that was a moral victory for Brent there mm-hmm. because he got off the bar behind Adler and actually closed the gap between them on the barbell going into that last well one. and you know we talked about this on the broadcast is that that seemed to be the last chance for North America to make up any significant time that they lost in the prior race yep. because you thought that Adler would kind of I don't want to say wipe the floor with Brent but would beat him by a noticeable margin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. once that happened, it's like, it's over now. It, it doesn't matter. The world's got it because even if they tie at three, you're just not going to make up that tie break time. And historically, what has been the knock on Brent as an athlete, right? He's too calculated. Mm-hmm. And when he needs to go for it, he has a hard time dialing up yeah. that like reckless abandon. And I thought we saw a piece of that right there. Uh-huh. I, I, I saw a glimpse of it back in 2019 at the Asia CrossFit Championships on a couple of events when he had already won a few. And it was like, oh, I can take some chances here. And it's safe to do so. Mm-hmm. This time it was like, it, he's going head to head with his buddy. And like, let's let's see it a little bit. And seeing him push it on the barbell was like, oh, all right. Yeah. Like, you ha- like, you've definitely been working on that. And maybe we haven't seen it as much in other areas. But um, that was that was the... The moral victory in the loss, and he was joking. He's like, "I'm the only one that lost my race," but yeah, I, was like, I feel pretty good about it. <laughs> yeah, he should. And like I said, but given the situation, he just didn't need to lose by a ton, and he didn't. Mm-hmm. And then Tia comes out and wins it, and now we're tied. We're tied at four. We got four more events on Sunday, and that that whole event was a huge surprise for me because I, I thought it would go the other way. On paper, it looked like it would go the other way, but give the world team credit. I think they. I think the world team's done a really good job of maybe strategizing a little bit better than, than North America has as far as, at least in that one. I, I think the matchups were kind of blind. Mm-hmm. I think they kind of said, we'll have this person do this, this person do that. I don't think one person declared first, and then you got to pick the matchups. Because uh, yeah, if sure. it did, if you did know and you could switch afterwards, I'm, I'm really wondering if maybe uh, North America runs Dallin Pepper out earlier because whoever you're going to put against Yi is going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> and down, and down. you could see that Dallin almost knew it, right? Yeah, well, I just wanted to be got, up on the muscle up. He yeah. got off the bar, bar muscle up. Oh, and that was and it so looked, that was just, They did that one just, and I don't know if anyone saw it because I think our internet was down at that point. But yeah, it was a f- mere formality. But man, we got four <laughs> events on Sunday and right now we only know two of them. Yeah. I, I got to say, though, credit to Dallin for that moment of celebrating. Yeah, that was good. When he beat Guy. Yeah, almost off the bar. It, he, like, beats him. You're like, oh, maybe he's going to do it. And then he goes nope. to, like, adjust, <laughs> yeah. he goes to adjust his belt. And yeah. he just waltzes yeah. right by yeah. him. Just power, power cleans, cleans everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that last one, he got close to parallel. But it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a full squat clean. So, 
world team's got to feel be feeling good right now. They they have momentum uh, and they're tied, you know, four points apiece. We got four events tomorrow. Again, we know two of them. I think there is one that happens in the morning that won't be streamed, but the other three that happen later in the day will. Um, but just let's, final thoughts on on day two before we look ahead to, to day three. The biggest thing that what Lauren will start with you. What stood out the most to you today? Just being impressed with, like, if if people were to put on paper who their matchup win would be, and the reality not being that, like, yeah, it was just being impressed with different athletes like mm-hmm. Enyol and Sahar and yeah, Team World as a whole. This was more. This was more. Today was more potential realized, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think the event as a whole today was much better and closer to what we. I think we idealize this event could be yeah right like with really good programming that was exciting and quick and fast and and had some like twists and turns and it felt like um and i'll i'll drop comparisons to another sport obviously but in march madness for college basketball it's known as like upsets anything can happen but as someone who watches it regularly and and even has gone to vegas multiple years for the opening of march madness which is a really big day there there's always that first upset in the morning that almost kind of like draws blood. Uh-huh. And then you're like, all right, the gloves are off. Yeah. Chaos is it's is allowed to happen. Everyone's and that's tearing up their brackets. Yeah. Yep. And that's what it felt like today was. Yeah. Like we got the upset, uh, we had like the come from behind victory down and Justin, and it felt like that was the first cut, right, in the in the in the boxing <laughs> match. And now it's like, all right, yeah. It's all hell is breaking loose. And um, I do want to do a quick shout out to the reps ahead crew. That was that, fun. That, yeah, did that, it was, that was a great. lot of fun. That's first. I got to call it with Brian friend. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. I think that's a great format. That is something. And we've talked about it before on this show. And I think we'll talk about it more as we, we move you know past this and, and we'll probably yeah. talk to, to fill the guys behind, behind it on the show a little bit more, but there's a lot of potential there to create something that ha- is more than just sort of a, uh, you know, a one-time thing, like maybe the, yeah. where you keep standings or I don't know, but it, it was fun. Like it's easy to understand. It's easy to grasp. Uh, yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, the matchup between Sprague and Hopper was oh, great. That was, was fantastic. so entertaining. <laughs> it was and, great. And it came down to like a tiebreaker, you know, and um, funny enough, uh, we had some down and dirty, uh, off the off the market, off the record books, uh, tiebreakers going on after the oh, event. Oh, did we? Yeah. So the women, uh, I think the women's uh, clean uh, weights were still out. And oh my god, Sean, this was amazing. This is tonight. This is tonight. Yeah. Right. We're, yeah. It, it, like uh, pretty much everyone's cleared off. Tape. Oh, I got I got video of it too. Uh, we both got video of it. Yeah. Sprague and suddenly Sprague and Hopper run out to the floor. And they're like significant others and and family and stuff are out there. I think oh, Grace please. Ann was like filming Hopper mm-hmm. with her phone, and we're like, "What's going on?" They're like, "All right, five bar muscle ups and run the women's ladder. We're okay. gonna we're gonna settle there, it yeah. once and for all." And so they just did it like old school street foot race. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. It, <laughs> but watch Hopper. And then Hopper just, just gives the last barbell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, oh, man. Uh, yeah. And now Sprague's pushing Hopper. Uh, it was That's hilarious. Good. good for them. That's funny. Uh, it was the the, uh, the opening scene in Zoolander when they do like the, 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 like the unsanctioned walk off yeah. and like the old Gap warehouse. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, I love that. I thought that was great. And we're going to have another, we'll have another reps head tomorrow with the main matchup being Kyra Milligan against uh, Annika Greer. Mm-hmm. So, so if you haven't watched it, tune in. It's going to be during the day. But let's talk about uh, the events that we have on tap for the Tier Cup. Again, we don't know what's going to happen early. That will not be streamed. Then we go into uh, another spotlight event. So it's one man, one woman, uh, each team. And it's uh, total time to get through these three things. Mm-hmm. Uh, first is uh, 50 or 40 calories on the Echo Bike. The second is 50 bar facing burpees. And the third is a 500 meter assault run. So it's cumulative time. Just like we saw with the gymnastics event, mm-hmm. there was total reps. This is total time now. How many it's athletes? Two. One? one man, one woman. Okay. So total time for each. Uh, I don't know if they've declared their athletes yet, but that's one of the one that's known. The other is going to be uh, another one of teams of three. So three men, three women. And they'll... All start. I think the women are going to go first. 
they'll all start at the same time. And side by side, they will do a 9, 15, 21 of wall-facing strict handstand push-ups, burpee box jump overs at 30 and 24, shoulder to overhead, 155, 105, and barbell back rack lunge for meters, so 9, 15, and then 21. Then once they finish that, they take a two-minute break. Then they go 21, 15, 9 of toes to bar, box jump overs at 30 and 24, alternating single arm dumbbell snatches at 80 and 55, and then single arm dumbbell overhead lunge in meters. The total cumulative time of all six athletes. Oof. So that's going to be a little tricky, but it the is. way we understand it is that three women, six women will go out on the floor. They'll do all this. They'll all clock a time, kind of like it was to start yeah. the mm-hmm. day today. Yeah. Then the men will come out. They'll all clock a time. You add it up, mm. see who wins. Um, this just popped in my head, but as far as like the specialist events go, you know, like this, the spotlight single modality specialist yep. event, mm-hmm. the aerobic and like cardiovascular ones really got the shaft. Like, <laughs> like it, the weightlifting, you're like, oh yeah, go out there and hit three lifts mm-hmm. of, of snatch and clean and jerk. It's like the gymnastics ones. I mean, the max muscle ups and the rope climb is a lot of pulling and like the, the skill component of the free standing handstand pushups means you're probably going to fall on your back a few times. Mm-hmm. But it's not going fifty calories on the on the assault bike oh, all out, and it's know, not right? what fifty is that fifty burpees for time? Yeah, fifty bar facing burpees. For, like, I mean, those two, you just you're just stomping the gas. Just lit your ball bag on yeah, fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's Pat Sherwood used yeah, to say, yeah. dip, it, dip it in magnesium <laughs> and <laughs> like, strike, a, strike a match." Yeah. <laughs> but those are the only two we know, and then there's the captain's battle that'll close things out. And that'll be another, uh, that'll be Daniel Brandon and Pat Vellner against Toomey and Bjorven Carl Gumanson. But that has not been announced. And I don't know if that's worth more points or not. But oh, man, that it's going to be... be fun. It's going to be a good time. Um, and I think, like, I think overall so far, I, I, the format, this format will work. Yeah. I think to make it really, really, like, take it to that extra level, I think you need more than two teams. Mm. But, I think we're, that what we're doing right now is it's proof of concept that this team of eight with different challenges, strategizing mm-hmm. matchups is an exciting way to do a team competition. Mm. And it's just like we talked about this and we talked about this on the broadcast tonight. We mentioned it a couple, uh, I think last week, 2013 on paper at the Invitational. Yep. The, uh, the Team USA was by far the better team on paper, but Team World wound up winning paper don't mean shit uh, does it you don't don't play the game on paper <laughs> but <laughs> I, I like this i like the format a lot i want to see more team competitions like this that's one of my favorite uh lines from boss during one of the any of the crossfit docs he's like we don't just determine the winner by lining up everyone's vo2 max and awarding them the prizes mm-hmm. you still got to run the race yeah, yeah. okay Which, you got any predictions what do you think like i know we only know two events but mm. I think North America is going to win. I'm, I, I I thought they were going to win going in. I don't want to change my change my pick, but yeah, let's. But see. but it but. is not it is not nearly as certain as I thought it was before we started. Mm-hmm. It's going to be close. It is going to be close, and I think that's great. Because there, look, there was a concern. There were conversations had about like, what if this thing's out of reach by the time we get to Sunday. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm just even by the time coming into today, tied is a win. I agree. I, I think that I think you we capture how we feel today, regardless of if North America runs away with it or mm-hmm. world runs away with it tomorrow. And remember that, like going into Sunday, there was excitement. Yeah, there was yeah. like anticipation, Absolutely. and yeah, I, I th- my prediction for tomorrow. I think I think I think we'll see another like. Like breakout type performance from someone like Annual or okay. Sarah again. I think we'll we'll see that. I think if they roll Annual out for the the single modality like or the specialist aerobic one, mm-hmm. I think he could do some damage. Who would you he, put out there for that? For the bike, for I mean, I one think, man, one woman here. For I think the is men, Dallin Pepper going? I think the, I think the yeah. men ha- have to send Dallin for the bike. And the and the burpees, he's good at burpees, and he ran well. And he ran this really morning. well this morning, and I think you send out Annual as well because okay. Annual's good on the bike. He had really good burpees, and he was a good runner there too. They were neck and neck with him and Dallin coming in. Okay, 
So it's like, all right, well, who's then who, who's the women there? Oof, Do you? Yeah. I mean, you come on. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think though, because you, I almost think you don't want a captain on that one. Emma. Right? Yeah, maybe Emma. I think this might be a good aerial event yeah. too. Mm-hmm. But or okay. or or you send out Emily Rolf. Yeah. If you're worried that maybe the burp, like the burpees aren't going to be the best for her, but I just think her leg endurance is so good. Yeah, it is total time, so you can yeah. give up something there. You know, you can smash another one, but uh, it's going to be fun. Again, the the morning event will not be streamed. The final three will be. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, no, there will be another reps ahead, as I mentioned. Annika Greer and Kyra Milligan going head to head in the main, uh, the main matchup. There, it'll be t- there's another undercard, and yeah, then then we'll be done. Um, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, we want to thank Box Basics, our sponsor. Don't forget about the giveaway we have going on with them. Check our Instagram page, the posts with the. Uh, the tier CR2 trainers. You can win a pair of those. Uh, we'll be on site tomorrow again, giving out goodies, doing trivia, having uh, more coverage. And then next week we'll have a full recap. And then we will turn our attention to, I guess the next, Oh, we'll also take time next week to talk about uh, the adaptive CrossFit games. I realize those are going on right now, but given how uh, embedded we are now with Wadapalooza, we haven't had a chance to really keep an eye on, on what's going on with the uh, adaptive games. So we'll talk about that a little bit next week as well. Yeah. Uh, and got some other good stuff on the horizon. And then the next big one is going to be the Rogue Invitational in November. So we got to spend some time with Mitch Hooper today. Yeah, yeah, to yeah we did. That. Good so dude. Have him, on the, have him on the show possibly to, to, to yeah. preview that sometime soon. So yeah, that was a fun conversation. Really enjoyed talking I like to Mitch. Him. Really enjoyed talking to Mitch. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, enjoy the final day of competition at Tier Water Pizza SoCal. For Tommy Marquez and Lauren Khalil, I'm Sean Woodland. Take care of each other, be better, and we will talk to you guys next time. I don't want to wait.